Hi, everybody. It's finally here. Ableton Live 12 is out. And to celebrate, I am sharing with you 12 MIDI generators and transformers uh, that I've made. So this is a new feature in Ableton Live, this ability to create devices that programmatically modify MIDI clips. They can generate notes within MIDI clips. They can also uh, transform or modify or change the attributes of notes that are already in clips. And Live ships with, I think, 12 of them. And what I've done is use Max for Live to build another 12. And you can get these using a link down in the description below. There's one free one, which is basically a swing knob for Live because Ableton didn't provide one in their bundle. And I figured most people would need that. Uh, and then the other 11 are for sale, and there's a discount code uh, in the description down below. So what I'm going to do in this video is just go through all 12 of these, give a quick description, explanation of how each of them works. Uh, if you've just bought these devices and you want to learn more about them so that you can learn how to use them, you can use the chapter markers down below to skip to the ones that you're interested in. Okay, so let's dive in here. So I have a MIDI clip. I'm going to delete what's already in it. And if you are brand new to this feature, basically all you have to do is just create an empty MIDI clip, come to this pane over here on the left. Sometimes the pane is vertical like this, in which case you're going to look for these transform and generate sections. I prefer the horizontal view, so generation and transformation. And you can see the transformer is kind of grayed out. This isn't one of mine. This is one of the default uh, live ones. The transformer is grayed out because there's nothing in here. So first what we'll do is uh, generate using this device that I have called uh, phase pattern. And this one, if you have seen my videos in the past, you may already understand what's going on here. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to imagine the time space of the MIDI clip using this line and this line describes sort of the distribution of the notes that we will create across the MIDI clip. So if I press this apply button here, I've created a bunch of notes, I've created eight of them, and they're evenly spaced. And they're evenly spaced because this line is straight. You can imagine that we take the x-axis here of this little graph, and we just slice it into eight even segments because we're creating eight notes. And then on the y-axis, we just draw a line to the point of intersection with each of those eight points on the x-axis. And because this is a straight line, those are all even. However, if we bend this line, then we can actually change that point of intersection uh, where the y-axis hits. Lines hit the x-axis points and create some different patterns. So if I start with the basic and I hit play, And then I bend. You can hear we're getting this kind of bouncing ball effect. We could also do the opposite of that. And then with this other number box, we can actually switch to kind of a whole different shape. So if I go from zero in this one all the way to one, now we have a different set of shapes from this like seat, as you might call it, shape function up to a sigmoid or an S-shaped function. And then we can actually mix between the sigmoid slash seat one and the previous one that we had that was like exponential linear logarithmic. So if I set this to say 0 0.5 or so, we can get all these different shapes. And you can modify this function the way that I have been with these two uh, mess number boxes, but you can also just click and drag on the viewer here and modify it that way as well. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start like this and then I'll kind of dial it in with these. And these kind of clicky, draggy function things are in a lot of these devices. So you'll see this come up a lot. So on top of the ability to sort of generate this initial pattern, we can also um, change the duration of the notes. We can quantize them, so we can lock them to the grid of the MIDI clip. So if you change the grid, like if we, let's say quarter notes, something dramatic, 
you can see we're basically just getting quarter notes because we don't have enough resolution with, with quarter notes to really do anything interesting. But if I go back to 16ths, we can change the number that are getting created, the number of events. And we can even randomize. So if I go back to the straight line, and I just use a little bit of jitter here. Jitter basically is just a little bit of randomness to actually that spacing to give us a little bit of a human, I guess you could say, humanization, human feel with a little bit of randomness. And then you could even quantize after applying that randomness, which in some cases might be cool. So now that we have a pattern here, we can change the pitch of these notes with the pitch section here. So we have a similar type of function and we have a range, which right now is just C3 to C3, so nothing's gonna happen. But if I change this from to C3 to C4, now we have this rising melody, little ar arpeggio basically. We can make that fall by just switching the direction of the function, or we could change it all together. And for this pitch and also for the velocity, uh, it's a little bit different. So we have the same X linear to logarithmic shape, but we also have, instead of the sigmoid and the seat, we have like this sine wave that can be warped left and right. straighten this out. And then we can also repeat this. So I'm going to actually lengthen my clip here, delete what's in it, and I'm going to create uh, 32 notes. And by changing this iterations amount, we can cause this function to repeat. And then the same goes for the velocity. So the velocity works exactly the same. So just getting a little bit more liveliness there out of that velocity modulation. And having, I think, you know, I find that having a little bit of a desynchronization between, you know, say this velocity iter iterations and the pitch iterations allows us to sort of change which particular note is emphasized and makes this feel like a lot less of a loop. This link button will also, by the way, just snap these two values together in case you just want a static value and you just want to be able to move them all up and down. So that's face pattern. This is pretty elegant. Let's move on to the next uh, generator here. So the next one I'll talk about is called Blocks. I'm gonna uh, create a new clip. And this one is inspired by Alex Van Gills, originally by Alex Van Gills and um, Sarah, Sam, Alex and Sam from Cycling74, who did this project called Nest Up uh, that had this concept called like a container. And basically the way to think about this is it's taking some unit of time, like a measure in this case, and it is dividing it um, into uneven segments. And I think probably the easiest way to explain this is just to show it. So I have two sliders here. As I increase one slider, the length of the note that is 
correlated to it. So the second one increases and the length of the other one decreases to make it fit basically. So the same length of the clip is not changing, but we are just changing kind of the proportional length of each of these events. Um, and actually I really like this one with drums. So I'm gonna switch over here to drums and I'm gonna switch to C1 because I know I have a kick drum there. Right. And like with the other one, you can quantize. And we can also increase the number of notes. And I find this is really great for just getting a quick pattern together that's not even. Like this is not the one you want to use really for like something straight. And without the quantization, it can be pretty weird. But it's really great for just getting an idea together really quickly. And that's basically this one. Velocity. This one is really great. Let's actually change to a different sound here. Maybe like a tom. There we go. So this one is really good in conjunction with another, with a transformer that is called divs. So these two kind of go together. They really are inspired by this Nest Up project by Sam and Alex. And divs is like their concept of a subdivision. And what this one does is um, it divides these notes in even segments. So right now we just have one slider, which means that we're going to divide all of these by however many this slider says. So now we've divided them all into in two. Or I could divide them all by a lot. And I could also, using a very similar kind of function generator here, as we saw on face pattern, vary the pitch or the velocity. In the case of the um, drum kit, the pitch one doesn't sound so great, but you can totally hear the, the effect of the velocity. What we can also do is increase the number of sliders. And what we're gonna basically do is, you know, starting from the original clip. So if I use Command Z a bunch here, and I wanna go back to the tom, there we go. We're just counting out. So we have four, so we got one, two, three, four, one, two. So this one and this one are the ones that were divided. So, you know, you could see already that with a combination of the blocks and the divs, you can really get some cool stuff out of these. And just by experimenting with different combinations of numbers, like how many slide, how many initial notes are you starting with from blocks? What are those kind of proportional lengths? Are those quantized or not? And then how many sliders are you using on the div side? And then what are the values of each of those sliders? Allows you to create lots of different rhythms. And just like with the other devices, we can quantize. And sometimes that will mean that you don't actually get the number of notes that you thought you would or that you asked for with these sliders. But obviously, you'll get something that is perhaps a little bit more compatible with other elements that you may have in your track. What I've been kind of finding in my experiments with these is that if I have something unquantized, very often I can't really combine it with that much other rhythmic stuff. So that music is simpler, a little bit more minimal. But if I have something that's a little bit more dense, perhaps something that wants to work on a dance floor, then I'm usually hitting that quantize button. And you can see that all the same controls that we had on the other one phase pattern exist for these kind of little function generators. If we go back over to the, the bell, um, the bell, and I just generate the same blocks and then I apply the same divs. And then I do a little pitch stuff.
lots of possibilities here, as you can see. So the next generator I'll show you is called Polyrhythm. And this is basically like a multi-track rhythm generator. It's really, really good for drums, but you can use it for melodies too. It's sort of similar to one of the built-in ones, which is called Euclidean, uh, but it has some extra features. So it's six tracks, so, and these are all identical to one another, and you can basically make rhythms with each of the tracks. I'm going to set the bass note here to C1. So this first parameter of each of these tracks is basically the offset from that bass. And like all of the other devices, it's scale aware. So if uh, you're using a, a pitched instrument or you have the scales avail enabled, um, then this control will offset the pitch in scale degrees, keeping things in tune. But because I'm using a drum rack here, it knows that it shouldn't enable any scales. So I'm just gonna step up one by one. So if I play this, I just have a basic Euclidean pattern here. So this is an eight step pattern with five events. And because this is a 16 step sequence, according to the grid in the MIDI clip, it's actually gonna loop that pattern twice. And I can change the Euclidean pattern parameters and change the pattern. So the first two parameters are the length or the number of steps and then this density and then the third one is the rotation. We can also add another one. really really like patterns like this that have different lengths because I think that it gives more sort of motion to the rhythm it feels less locked and it feels like less of a groove and this is an example of a polymeter so this video I made a while ago and which you can go find that explains the difference between a polyrhythm and polymeter and basically the difference between the two is that if I have uh, two patterns like this that are different lengths one is 12, one is 11, or let's do nine and I don't know, 16. Basically what we do is we just, when we're done with the first, it, when we're done with each pattern, so we've counted out nine and then we start, we wanna start the next one. We just start over with the next nine and we keep the grid resolution kind of underneath all of it the same. So we count out nine steps according to the grid, and then we just start the pattern over. In polymeter, what we do is we actually stretch the grid for each track independently according to the length. So if I do that by switching this distribution mode from fill, which is the polymetric version, to stretch, which is the polyrhythmic version, and I let's say if I increase here, you can see we're getting kind of a weird rhythm. And that's because we have basically two elements here that are using very different underlying grids. This tends not to work that well for drum stuff, particularly if you want it to work on the dance floor, but I find that it's great for things that are a little bit more experimental and also really great for melodic material. We're not quite as concerned with it really being locked in rhythmically. Uh, so the, there are these distribution modes that will allow you to toggle between the polymetric and the polyrhythmic uh, styles. There's also this third one, which is called Hug, which is like the polymetric, except it will not loop the pattern. So in the fill mode, you can see we, you know, if we have nine steps, we'll go through the first nine and then we'll restart uh, through to the end. And then when we get back to the beginning of the pattern, we'll start again with the first step. Um, but in the hug mode, we're just only using, you know, in this case, the nine. And then you can kind of shift each of the patterns within the clip like that. So this one's kind of cool too, um, just depending on what you're looking for. play around 
then see what works. You can also enable or disable any one of these tracks with these yellow buttons. And then, as I'm guessing you've already figured out, you can change like that instrument or the note that you're playing, the pitch that you're playing. In addition to Euclidean algorithm, we also have a, I'm going to go back to the Tom, uh, this other algorithm that I call Omni. And it is a little bit like the one that's used in the rhythm built-in Ableton device. Basically what it does is it lets you pick, like the Euclidean algorithm, I'm going to pause this, sorry. Like the Euclidean algorithm, it allows you to pick the length and the density of the pattern, but then it's not producing a Euclidean pattern. It's just going to give you, basically it's going to give you um, pretty much any pattern that is possible given those two attributes, the length and the density. And then this third knob, the variant, basically just allows you to cycle through any other possible pattern. So like, this is like kind of insane because you can literally have any possible pattern that is 16 steps long and has eight events in it. And you just can kind of scrub through and find the one that you like with this Omni mode. Uh, one note that I'll say is that this algorithm is a little, it's a little heavy, particularly when you're working with longer length. So you may find that when you're manipulating, particularly the length and the density, that it's a little bit sluggish. Um, but when you do the variant, it should actually be pretty snappy because we've already done all the math. Uh, to figure that out. Uh, so yeah, that's Polyrhythm, super powerful. I've been making tons of beats with it. Um, and it's really good once, you know, one thing that I find is that I'll kind of generate something. So I don't know, let's say, yeah, I'm happy enough with that. And then, then from there, I will go and start to play around with things to do stuff like, for example, modify the velocity right because this one just produces everything at a constant velocity and if you want there to be any variation in velocity for specific instrument you have to have another way to do that and that's where getting into kind of stacking generations and transformations with these midi tools is really powerful one thing that i've definitely found is uh, it's kind of cool you don't have to rely on one device to do everything you just have to rely on it to be able to give you something cool and then from there you can um change attributes of what you've created so let's do that so the way that i'm going to do that now is switch over to the transformers tab uh, and i'm going to select this uh this one called pattern transform so this is kind of a multi-function transformer and it has these two stages so there's the top and the bottom and the top stage what you do is you create a pattern and the purpose of this pattern is going to be to select which notes actually get modified so um, I'll show you in a second. You'll understand what that means when I show you in a second. The second stage is what the modification actually is. So what I want to do in this case is, is change the velocity. And let's say I just want to decrease the velocity. Okay, so I'll, I'll decrease it by 25. And you can see that for some of these notes, the velocity decreased. And actually what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to make a simpler pattern so you can understand what's going on here. So super basic. Eighth note pattern on, let's do the tom. So this pattern chooses which of these actually get modified. And this is also a Euclidean pattern. So now we're reducing the velocity of most of the notes, and you can kind of see what that selection pattern looks like over here. We can also have uh, this reduction of the velocity not just be an absolute, but we can accumulate. So we can basically add negative 10 every time we perform a transformation and we can get these like ramps. If I increase the density to 100, you can really see what happens. 
we have just a falling velocity because each time we get to a step uh, to a note that is active to be transformed we subtract in this case 20. We can change the number of cycles of that accumulation that we'll do before we wrap around. Tons of power here. And I, I'm not going to spend this video going into all the features of this particular device because it's actually fairly complex, but just understand that at the top here we have a pattern section, that the pattern selects notes that are eligible to be transformed, and the bottom section performs the transformation. We, here we also have the ability to toggle between the Euclidean and the Omni algorithms, pattern algorithms. And there's also two modes that determine how the pattern is applied. So in this case, we're just counting out the notes and the length of this sort of selection pattern is just the number of notes. So if the density is three, basically that means that three of these notes are actually going to be transformed. Uh, the accumulation mode won't transform the first one though, so you can kind of get those nice ramps. But if I go back and turn off the accumulation, you can see there's three getting transformed here. You can also change it so that instead of the pattern being applied by counting out the notes, that we actually do it according to the grid. So if I do, um, if I change this to say a 16th note, then we're using, we're counting out the 16th notes to actually apply the pattern, which depending on the type of material that you're working with can have different results from doing it in the note mode. If we go back over to our original pattern here and we experiment a little bit with some of this velocity stuff. So we'll do the minus, uh, we'll do minus 15 with the accumulation. And we'll do the note mode. And also you can say for the note mode how many notes we're counting out. So you can see we're all getting a lot of variation there in, in the velocities. Um, this device has so many other features <laughs> i won't even go into all of them you can do the same thing with pitch uh, that you can with velocity you can do the same thing with chance or the probability that you can with velocity you can also divide so basically with this one the notes that actually fit the sort of selection criterion are subdivided <laughs> So lots of possibilities here. There's uh, also a fuse, which will, uh, which will join notes. So when, I, you know, when I'm using this, I'm kind of just like playing around. And a lot of times what I'm doing is like option dragging to like copy a clip that I have and I like, and then I'll start from there again to make new transformations or I'll kind of have an initial pattern and I'll just keep copying the initial pattern and make several generate um, like variations just by playing around with, uh, with this device. Uh, this device also has a sibling, which is the next one I wanna talk about, which is called Condition Transform. So this one, the bottom section is basically the same. The only difference is that it doesn't have the fuse, uh, but the top section is totally different. It performs the same function of, it's responsible basically for selecting which notes to transform. But the way that it does that is by selecting them based on the attributes of the note. So, and that attribute can be pitch, velocity, duration, or chance. So in this case, say I wanted to modify only the uh, tom, which is the highest note, you know, highest pitch. It's, you know, with the drum rack, it's a little bit different, but it's the highest note value. And this view here basically is like a graph that's showing you at each uh, note, which are 36, uh, whatever this hi-hat is, and 43, which is the tom, how many notes there are for each of those just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, just to help you kind of visualize what's going on. 
And so if I select one of these and then I apply the transformation, you can see right now I'm only changing the velocity of the tom because I've only selected the toms. If I wanted to instead divide the toms, I could do that. So I'm only dividing the toms because I'm only picking the ones that have that node. I could also also divide the hi-hats, let's say. Let's play it. Now I'm selecting everything. And this one, um, yeah, again, it's a, it's, it's a super powerful way to just introduce variation in. One thing I'll find myself doing sometimes is just like picking velocity or some kind of, you know, arbitrary attribute in order to be able to like inject some change into the system here without like radically changing everything. And that's kind of the, the goal behind these two pattern transform and condition transform devices is to basically give you the ability to get variations quickly that are still similar enough to the original material that you kind of have some musical consistency there. Um, and it, with the condition transform, I just found myself having kind of specific situations being like, oh man, I'd really like to like, you know, change every um, note in here that's playing what this one sound or one pitch or one sample. And I just want to like change all of those to a different one, right? Condition transform makes that pretty easy because you just pick that one and then you can, you know, use the, the pitch, for example, to kind of shift it up or down, um, which sometimes is easier than like, you know, doing a click and drag here in the in the view. So it has some sort of practical uses uh, as well. Um, from here, I want to talk about one other device, which is branches off of this one and is similar to it. And it's also very similar to divs, which is called segment. So in, in, a, in, a, in a sense, this one is kind of like condition transform meets divs. And the idea basically is, I really liked the idea to be able to divide, subdivide, based on the duration. Because I found myself in situations where I wanted to use subdivision, which I find is really powerful for creating ratchets or whatever. Um, but I wanted the type of control that divs offers, like these velocity ramps and things of that nature. So what we have here is the same little histogram view that uh, that condition transform has, but it will show you just the durations. So I can pick the longer events. So, oops. Oh, by the way, with all of these, if you click and drag and you select notes, it's going to change, you know, what it's showing you. It's going to change what's kind of eligible for to the, tra to the device. Um, but anyway, if I come back here and I pick the longer notes, and then I, let's do four. And then I do a little velocity ramp. Yeah, you're getting the idea here just really super surgical control over subdivision. Uh, this one also has quantization. So in this case, let me get rid of this kick. Um, actually, I can't do that because of the way the MIDI tools work, it's a little weird. Basically, if I modify the clip, it's now going to be modifying the transformed clip if I manually edit the clip. But anyway, it has uh, quantization, so if I... Sorry, I need to go back now. If I enable quantization, I'm going to quantize that subdivision. So in this case, we don't end up really getting three because we have to get rid of one in order to make quantization possible. But again, this is a thing where sometimes you just want things to be locked to the grid. The last feature of this device, which I think is really cool, is called proportional. And I'm going to start with something a little bit uh, specific in order to show you how it works. So if we go back to a phase pattern, um, let's say with quantization on, and then we come over to segment, 
you can see we have notes of several different lengths. And if I pick, let's say, the longest one, and then the second longest one, so the first two. So they've both been divided by three, and you can see that because they've both been evenly divided into three, were the, uh, the, the durations of the notes that were created are different for the first one from the second one. So if we play this, which is cool, but there are some situations in which you actually want, even though you're subdividing notes of different lengths, you want those resulting subdivisions with air quotes to all be the same length. And that's where the proportional comes in. So it's kind of up to what you're looking for. So you play around and just mess with it, see what you like. Okay, so that's segment. Um, I think I'll probably go over here and do the last generator now, which is called Turing Machine. So this is uh, inspired, really, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a copy basically of the very famous uh, Eurorack module Turing Machine by Tom Whitwell, which is a really simple but elegant and, and, and fascinating device for generating new ideas. Uh, so I wanted to make a MIDI tool version of this, particularly because the perhaps the biggest shortcoming of that device is that uh, it doesn't quantize or it doesn't obey any scale. Like there's no concept of a scale in it. Uh, but in live, we have the scales. So I can, with this device, generate uh, basically randomized melodies, but those melodies still stick within uh, a scale. So if I come, actually, I'm going to come over to the pitched instrument that I have here. And this is laid out very similarly to how the original device is laid out. We have these lights at the top that uh, visualize the shift register. I'm not going to explain how the Turing machine works. If you'd like to know, you can watch videos. But basically, this big knob, usually as a starting point, you want to keep it in the center. If I press... Um, one of these three buttons, I'm going to add a bit into this 8-bit register here. If I click a 1, I'm going to add a sort of an on or an activated bit. If I click a 0, I'm going to add an off bit. And if I click an R, I'm going to click a ran uh, create a random one based on the position of this knob. If the knob is in the center, it's going to be completely random as to whether it's on or off. Based on that um, on that pattern, we will generate both the, the shift register will generate both a rhythm as well as pitches. And the, basically the way that it does that is it uses the sort of binary representation of this as a number, which is a pitch. And then, then it also just uses this itself as a rhythmic pattern. Um, so the way that you generate notes is by clicking these buttons. You can do it as I have been and kind of generate them one by one. Or you can click this one and generate several in one fell swoop. And the number that you're generating is this length button here. You can also clear the register and start fresh if you want to. This knob, uh, by turning it left and right, basically if you go to the all the way to the right, I have to start with something. So let me clear and start with something. If I go all the way to the right, it's going to just uh, can keep producing that same result. But if I go slightly off of it, what it's going to do basically is create similar, but not totally different, not similar variations. I should really use 16 here as the length, by the way, because we have a 16 step clip here with the, with the grid. So as I get closer to the end here, the amount of variation each time I click the button will be slightly less. But again, there's randomness in there, so you can't totally control it. And then going the other way, it's similar, except it will, all the way to the left, it's going to like toggle between two states. And then slightly off of that, it's toggling between two states with a little bit of variation added in. 
the pitch section down here can allows you to transform sort of what's happening in terms of the pitches that these weight sliders are a feature of the i think like an add-on module for the turing machine and basically just messing with them will change kind of how what pitches get made and you can just mess with them that's what i do the range is basically how wide of an octave range are you going to get and then the offset allows you to just like shift the whole thing up and down and you notice like if i turn this knob i don't actually immediately transform what's in the clip you still have to click the button just so you know because this these control the data that goes into the shift register so this one works pretty differently from the others but i find it really fun just to mess around try to get you something that i can start with and then take that into a transformer let's hear a few things start with that so now I'll take this opportunity to show you another transformer let's go with draw this one's really simple it's just a bunch of sliders that allow you to change the values of the pitch velocity or chance and you can either do that as an offset from the note that's currently in place or the value the velocity or the chance or whatever or relative to some center point you set absolutely. So in this case, we'll we'll start with the rel we'll start with the absolute actually. So C3 is the center point, which I can change. And then I'm just basically rewriting the notes by using these sliders. But if I switch into this relative mode, and I let's reset. So this is the original pattern that the Turing machine produced. Now I can offset from that point that each of them is at. This is a great way to get a little velocity variation in. One thing I'll often do, particularly if I have a long pattern, just come in here, go into velocity mode, maybe set this to plus or minus 50, which sets kind of the range that these sliders have an effect over. And then just lower the velocity of a few notes. maybe increase it for some too and that just gives you a little bit of motion really quickly I find it's just a little bit more like user-friendly a little bit easier than um, working in the MIDI clip and then the same thing for the chance So that's draw. Then let's feel. So this is the one that's free. It's just a swing knob. Um, the swing is going to be based on the, the grid. So in the basic mode here, higher values are going to shift back every other note. So if I create another event like here and another one like here, but first I have to remove swing because editing the clip is bad unless you want to transform then what you've edited. And you always have to be careful about what's selected. This is not a, a feature of my device. It's just how it is in MIDI tools. So you can see we can shift back the odd, like the odd number, the notes that occur on odd number kind of grid points. So that's basic. And then it also has this advanced mode, which basically gives you as many sliders as there are grid positions. And it lets you shift each one of those independently. So let me actually go back to phase pattern and start with something super simple. 16th notes. With a little bit of velocity variation so we don't go crazy so with this I can shift 
the position of each of these independently. And the number of, again, the sliders are not, there's the number of sliders is not the number of notes, although it is in this case, it's the grid. So we're just, sh it's almost like what we're doing is warping the spacing between the grid lines here. So this is basically a really cool way to get humanization in your clips. And again, this is a free free device, link is down below. So that's feel. What else do we have here? Shift. Okay, this one's cool. Um, I'm going to use draw really quickly to change our pitches. Okay, so shift is this idea. Oh, actually, I'm going to use draw on the uh, chance as well. Okay, let's go to shift. So shift allows you to take each note attribute and shift it independently of the other ones. So let's start with the velocity as an example. So I have this undulating melody, and these are the velocities applied to each of those notes. But if I shift the velocity, I can actually change how the velocities apply to the notes by just moving over those velocities and wrapping around. I can also do the same with the pitches and the chants. And I can even do it with the duration. So if I make a new clip, let's go to phase pattern. And then back over to shift. Uh, the duration can be shifted, which with this instrument doesn't do all that much, but with other instruments, with a different kind of envelope, it would. It also has this multi feature that allows you to shift everything, or more specifically, just the ones that have this um, M enabled. And we also have these reset and randomize buttons that also respect the M, or the link sort of link multi is what I call it. to like maybe reset the duration by the way this button kind of toggles on or off all of them and then I want to randomize everything else super quick easy way to get variation on your on your stuff all right what do we have left here shift develop okay so the idea behind this one is the ability to like fade in or fade out a pattern without not with the mixer but by kind of reducing or increasing the density of the pattern so basically if i'm fading it out i'm i'm removing notes if i'm fading it in i'm adding notes uh, and fading in versus fading out is controlled with this button over here and then the number of sort of loops of the pattern over which we perform that fading in or fading out is this generation. So if I say two generations, uh, right now I'm fading in and you can see that there are several like muted notes. Uh, if I wanted to fade out, then I would just switch this and it would go the other way. I can also um, use this probabilistic mode, which basically all this means is instead of using muting to fade in or fade out, what we'll do instead is use chance. So basically now what we do is we're fading in, and if we look at the chance, I'm sorry, we're fading out, <clears throat> and if we look at the chance, we have maximum probability on all of these notes in the first clip, but in the second clip we have zero for a bunch of them. Uh, and we can use this little pattern generator to generate that, that, um, that set of values that basically form the kind of final state. So if I wanted uh, to develop over more generations, you can see that my 
uh, probability values down here are going from maximum and then kind of interpolating over time to the minimum. You can also just draw in here if you want to. Uh, but those settings will be overridden if you use these controls down here. And this is just a little, a little Euclidean guy. And then you can also kind of like change the range of all of them with these triangle guys over here on the right. This one is a little, I will say it's a little bit, there's, a, there's an issue with it, which is basically that in live, uh, when you're using these MIDI transformers, there's kind of the, the ever-present question of what should I transform? Should I transform the initial thing that you had in here, which was, if I command Z a million times, this? Or should I transform what's actually in front of you post-transformation? And the way that Live handles this base, this question is basically if you manually edit the clip or you change to another clip and come back or you change to another transformer and come back or you even if you change things like the selection region or the loop markers, then it will uh, start to use the thing that you're seeing in front of you as the thing that gets transformed. With this device, that can be a little bit confusing, and you're going to have to command Z sometimes if you want to um, change this loop marker position, because that can't be done, unfortunately, either through the MIDI tool. So I'm hoping that Ableton adds an update that will allow me, number one, to when a MIDI transformer transforms, that I can also do things like set this, because you, you have to do that manually. And then also perhaps give either the Max for Live developer or even better, the user uh, some more control over um, when that transformation happens or that change happens to transforming the old thing versus transforming the new thing. But if I play this for you, you can see there's just less and less going on. And if we extend out, by the way, all the way to one more bar, then we can just fade out to nothing. And this is a situation where I got a command Z and then set these values. And let's do the develop. And let's increase the density or actually decrease it so that we're, we have more that gets canceled out early on. And then we'll go and adjust this loop marker. So it's this pattern that kind of becomes itself over time. So that is all the devices I'm pretty sure. Condition version, who is it? Yep, I think that's everything. Um, Use that link down in, in below to get the free one feel. If you want to buy, uh, it's 20% off the with the link in the description down below for each of these individually. There's also bundles which uh, discount. So you can like stack the discounts if you use the get the bundle which has a built-in discount plus the download code. You can get these for, for cheap. Um, and I would love, love, love to hear the music that you're making with these. I'd also love to hear your ideas for future ones, feedback on ways to change these to make them even better. I'm all ears on all of that. Um, yeah, in the meantime, have fun, and I hope you're all enjoying Live 12. I'm going to be making lots of music for the next month or so. Thanks, everybody. Bye.